So something exciting happened recently that I'd like to share with you. Several years ago, I planted some peonies just from root around a few places in my yard. Slowly, slowly, the greenery has grown a little bit bigger with each year. And finally, this year, for the first time, I had two blossoms on one of my peony plants. I was so excited and it was amazing to look out the window each day waiting for the buds to bloom. Well, when they finally did, I almost couldn't believe how big and beautiful they were. In this picture here, you can see my hand next to one of the blooms. They were huge and the petals were so delicate. Anyway, for all of these years I've been taking care of this plant, it definitely did not disappoint. So I took some picture references and I'm excited to teach you how to paint these peonies today. Now, right off the bat, this may look intimidating and you might be feeling like you can't do this. But I'm here to say, this is easier than it looks and you can do it. If you watched my almond painting from last week, many of the same techniques we will be doing again today. Because I've got two peonies on here, it might be a little time consuming, but the key is just to work on one little section at a time. All right, enough talk, let's get to painting. So pull out some paper, paints, a paper towel, a cup of water, along with a few brushes, and we are ready to go. For my brushes today, I have a number six round for the background wash and leaves, a number two round for the petals of the peony, and a number zero liner brush for some leaf veins. Now for the drawing, because this is more of an advanced and complicated of a drawing, I'm not actually gonna be teaching you how to draw this on your own today like I've done with past tutorials, but I do have a free limited time outline for the first three days of this video that is available if you'd like to trace it onto your watercolor paper. I also have a purchasable outline of this as well on my Etsy shop. Both of these you can find a link to in the description of this video along with the list of supplies that I will be using for today's tutorial. All right, after I've got my paper taped down, I'm going to take my number six round brush and get some sap green and some hookers green onto my tray for the background wash. Then I'll start painting the leafy area with water, going around the flower heads and painting right over the top of the greenery. After I have a good section of water down, then I'll add in some touches of the hooker's green and sap green, making the darkest value or having most of the color closest to the peonies. I'm also going to use a paper towel to dab at some of the edges to lighten and fade them out. Then as an option, if you'd like, you can add in just a small amount of splatters near some of the leaves. All right, now let's freshen up our green colors a little bit and to the hooker's green, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to just one half of it. And then I'll add some azo yellow to one half of the sap green. Or if you'd like, you can just make separate sections of these mixed colors. When the background is completely dry, we're ready to paint the leaves. We'll paint the leaves with water first and then add in a different variety and combination of greens for each leaf. This one here, I'm using some of this blue green at the base and then adding in some yellow green at the tip. I 
I'll skip the leaves in between as I paint so that my colors don't start to blend together. And then I'll continue painting every other leaf until all of the leaves have been painted. The biggest thing here is to make the colors on each leaf just slightly different than the one that it's right next to, especially if they're leaves that touch or overlap each other so that they all don't look connected. You want them to appear as individual and separate leaves. Then after all your leaves are painted and completely dry, take this little liner brush and some of this sap green or azo sap green combination and paint in a few vein lines onto the leaves. We want these to be nice and thin and not too dark in value. Also, a few of these vein lines go a long way. Be careful not to add so much that it looks like a spider web instead of veins. Now before I move on to the flowers, which is the main feature of this painting, go change out your dirty water for some clean water so our petals don't have a tinted green color to them. Now let's mix up the color for our petals. I'm using mostly quinacridone rose with maybe a hint of alizarin crimson and just a touch of ivory black to soften that quinacridone rose color just a little bit. This makes it not so vibrant of a pink. And of course, you can test out your color and adjust it as needed. All right, using your small number two brush, let's paint the very center of this flower first, and then we'll work our way outward. So start with some of this gamboge yellow and paint all of these squiggly little lines right here in the center of both flowers. Then after the yellow has dried completely, take some of this nice pink color we made and paint that in between and around all of that yellow. Now this is going to be, and should be, the very darkest area of pink on the whole flower. The contrast between the light yellow and the dark pink is very striking and noticeable, and this creates the perfect focal point for your painting. Thank you. 
All right, the next step is to just paint the petals for these two flowers. Now, if you watched my almond blossom video from last week, we will be using a very similar method to paint these petals today. We'll start by painting one little section or petal with what I like to call a dirty brush or a brush that has just a slight amount of tinted colored water to it. Then after there is a light, wet layer of pink color filling the petal, we'll dip our brush tip into just a small amount of paint and apply that to the shadowed area of the petal and let it spread. If you find the color isn't blending as well as you'd like it to, or if you need to soften it a little bit, you can rinse and dry your brush and use a clean damp brush to push and spread that paint around just a little bit better. Now last week with the almond blossom petals, you could kind of pick and choose where that darker color needed to be, which is nice to have that freedom, but it's also hard at the same time because there's not that one sure go-to spot to put it. But what makes this painting easier to paint than it looks is that the darker color will for the majority of the petals be on the bottom of the petal or the inner part of the petal. Now you'll see that as I paint that I add the light tinted wet color first, then while that is still wet, I add the darker paint at the base or innermost part of the petal and then let it spread. Now there may be a few exceptions to this here and there that we'll talk about when we get there, but really if this method is how you painted every single petal on this page, it would turn out good. The hardest part I think about this painting is just the time it takes to do it. There are so many little sections and petals that it does take a good amount of time to complete. So my advice to help you stick it out is just to focus on one little petal at a time. Get up and take some breaks if you need to, and just don't give up. Realize that you can do it. Then when you're done, I think that you'll be pleased and surprised at the results of what you've been able to create. I really probably should have just drawn one peony instead of two, and then maybe it would be a little bit easier. But since you're tracing this paper on yourself, I guess you have that option if you'd prefer to just trace on one flower instead of two. As a couple of side notes, you might notice that I jump around a lot on this painting because I'm allowing sections of paint to dry before I paint the petal right next to it so that my colors won't start bleeding and blending into each other. Also, if you ever paint the color darker than you'd like, use a paper towel and dab some of that color off. And if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please give this video a thumbs up and also please consider subscribing to my channel. I give away free limited time outline drawings quite often and if you're a subscriber, you'll be the first one to know about it.
All right, congrats on sticking it through and finishing that first flower. Now we'll paint the second one in a similar way as the first, but because the angle of the flower is more straight on, when we add the darker color to these petals, a good rule of thumb for this peony is to have the darker color placed on the inner part of the petal and leave the outside edge of the petal lighter in value. Hopefully you'll see and understand what I mean as we get going. It also might be a good idea at this point to change your water again. Now at this point, you'll see I have a lot of little tiny white sections left over. Most of these are areas of petals that are a little folded or showing the underside of the petal. I want to keep these really light in value still. So for some of them, I may just have the first light initial wash of color and may not even add any darker color to these after the initial wash. But the choice is up to you and for what you feel like your painting needs. Well done, you've made it through to the end. At this point, you can call your painting done if you'd like, or you can add one more final touch. I'm going to add some nice dark sap green mixed with ivory black to some of the spaces between the leaves. Now I'm just putting down some nice dark green right up close to the peonies, and then I'll rinse and wet my brush and use a little bit of water to spread and fade the color as I move away from the flower. This is definitely an optional step, but I think it just adds a little more depth to the painting. And that's it for today. I truly hope that you feel pleased and satisfied with your peony painting. Also, make sure you tune in next week. We'll be painting a simple but pretty little landscape, and I will also be using a new brand of paint that I've never tried out before and was pleasantly surprised by. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.